Hello, welcome to Intercept, where DOD, academia, and industry meet. I'm Matthew Bakovic. I'm joined by my colleague, Matt Trevers. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. So, Matt, today I've got a very specific topic in mind, um, and that is the CMMC. I'm just back from the RSA conference, and the CMMC was often the topic of conversation. Could you explain to our audience what CMMC is? Sure. So, CMMC is the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification. It is a certification uh, built around a maturity model that will be used for the defense industrial base to evaluate the cybersecurity of various members, of which there may be 350,000 companies. Well, so, 350,000 yes, DIB members in the right. U.S.? Okay. And CMMC is, is largely a, a five-tiered system. Five levels is what they call them in CMMC. And they will go from basic hygiene uh, all the way up to proactive uh, controls or requirements that allow you to defend against advanced persistent threats. So as I understand, the purpose of the CMMC is to better protect uh, the intellectual property and the defense secrets in the U.S., is that right? Correct. So uh, CMMC is born out of 800-171 from NIST, uh, which is uh, the control of unclassified information. Uh, we, we largely a lot of the practices, so there are two sides to CMMC. There's the practice side and the process side. And the process side is about institutionalization or developing stickiness. The, the practice side is largely uh, built up around 171 as well as other uh, standards. So ISO 27001, Center for Internet Security, Critical Security, Critical Security Controls, UK Cyber Essentials, and then the Australian Signals Directorate. Those were various... Uh, bodies of knowledge that we use to incorporate and to make sure that the DIB had the best possible cybersecurity as they tried to build up their defenses. Okay, when I hear references to maturity, to scales, to institutionalization, this sounds a good deal like other work that the SCI has done. I'm thinking about the CMM and the CMMI. Yes. And also, right, that's the capability maturity model for software development. Mm -hmm. We're also thinking of the CERT resilience management model. Correct. Can you kind of explain how this builds on the work that was done prior at the SCI? Correct. So our team on cybersecurity assurance, we're largely responsible for, uh, we're the custodians of a resilience management model, which is a very large book of about 1,000 pages, which covers 26 process areas. Cover everything from human resources to controls management, controls requirements. And what, what it encompasses is a lot of the stuff that we learned from CMMI. So it'll uh, build upon generic practices. So having policies, having uh, practices written, how do you incorporate feedback into your practices to make them better? How do you disseminate information across the organization? So that RMM, very wide and very deep, and we used a lot of that material to inform how we did process institutionalization within CMMC. So it sounds like a, uh, it sounds like two things to me. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like looking at the, these bodies of work sort of um, in, in combination. Mm -hmm. It's a list of best practices mm -hmm. and then a set of measures that allows you to benchmark or determine where you are in relation to the, the criteria in the models, is that correct? Correct. So the model has, as I mentioned, the left and right side practices and processes. The left side practices are largely leveled practices. So there's, there's some components of, of maturity progression, like crawl, walk, jog, run, sprint. There's some uh, examples of that in there, but the, the end result of the left side is not true capability progression. We, we took the practices and as we felt there were themes, we would put them in levels. So perhaps installing antivirus is, is a level one, but then being able to update it or being able to build it into a larger patch management strategy, maybe that would be level two. Maybe incident response is, is too comprehensive for a level one so that we put that in level two. So there's some components of capability progression, but the left side is largely just a series of leveled practices. The right side, the process institutionalization, there are five processes that we have on the right side. Uh, writing down what you do and then do what you wrote down, so okay. making sure your stuff is documented so that if Bob and Alice are both part of your information security, that if, if Bob decides he wants to go to the Bahamas on vacation, then Alice can pick up and, and execute the mission with with the same uh, rigidity of, as Bob would do it because she can go look up the, the practice and continue uh, the job so that there's, there's less variance in how the job is executed. So that is 
one of the institutionalization processes. Another is to have policies. So in, in CMMC, there are 17 domains. We're not saying you need to have one policy per domain, but we need you to make sure that you have an effective policy. So a policy, root components are topic, scope, roles and responsibility, and then some form of, of guidelines, right? So as long as you're building your policies to meet those objectives and they specifically talk about the practices of CMMC, that will give you a good start on building policies that meet the needs of CMMC. Okay, and the, the premise, as I understand, is that uh, practices that are institutionalized will persist in a time of stress, whereas Correct. things that aren't institutionalized right. are inherently brittle, Correct. and those processes will fail. And I know that's, that's sort of a central theme that runs through the models we've created yes. in this space. So why do you think we need this now? Why the CMMC now? So if, if you listen to some of Miss Arrington's talks... And that's and, Katie Arrington. Katie Arrington, she is the CISO for the Acquisition and Sustainment within the DOD. She will talk about, you know, being amazed that a foreign nation has a fighter jet that looks largely like the one we spend billions and billions of dollars in R&D, and it looks exactly the same. How is that possible? There are so many ways to build a fighter jet. How did that foreign nation come up with the same design? Well, it's because information has been flowing out of the defense industrial base and other organizations, to be fair, uh, because we haven't had our eye on the prize. We, we haven't had enough uh, concentration on making sure that people only have the information they need to execute the job. So Ms. Arrington yesterday in a, in a talk mentioned that a spot welder may have had the entirety of the airframe of a fighter jet on their computer because the person that subcontracted them didn't take the time to say, hey, this welder only needs X amount of information. Instead, they got the entirety of the fighter jet. So we, we I mean, that's a, a lapse on our fault, right? We need better guidelines on how to manage CUI or CUI, as it's often called. Right. So, Wait, so thanks. I, it, it seems to me, then, this is, we, we are addressing a significant supply chain risk management yes. topic yes. that uh, we have a complex distributed way of creating defense critical items. Mm -hmm. And this is a way to bring a baseline of security to yes. that myriad of vendors and suppliers in that complex ecosystem. Correct. And I think it really speaks to the mission of the SEI as mm -hmm. a federally funded research development center and the CERT division, where mm -hmm. uh, if folks are interested in working at the SEI or working for CERT, uh, this is a bright line to something that we see as a critical need as a priority in national defense. Correct. And we've been asked by the Department of Defense to help address that. Correct. So uh, one of the reasons I really like working in an FFRDC, and especially here at the SCI and the CERT Division, is that I feel like we're having a tangible, demonstrable impact mm -hmm. on the nation's security posture. So is it fair to say that, that CMMI uh, was that impactful program, that mm -hmm. way of working in the 1980s mm -hmm. that built this strong base of, of concepts and ways of working that we're now capitalizing on mm -hmm. to have a similar impact in supply chain risk management for the, the defense industrial base. Correct. So it's a continuation, but I think a, a novel application of our key concepts and mm -hmm. skills. We do have a need for more engineers here. Yes. At at the SCI and certainly within the CERT division. Correct. Can you speak to the types of things that our engineers do mm -hmm. in supply chain risk management and perhaps in the creation of the, the CMMC? Okay, so I'll start with the, the, uh, the external dependency or the supply chain. So my team, the Cybersecurity Assurance team, uh, our major two customers are CISA and the DOD. So Sorry, for, CISA is? Uh, the Cybersecurity and Infra Infrastructure Security Agency. At the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, yes, at the Department of Homeland Security. So we have several assess assessment methodologies that are, again, based on RMM. So that body of knowledge, a thousand pages, gets used quite often here. So we built tools for CISA, uh, then DHS, uh, the CRR, Cyber Resilience Review, as well as the EDM, External Dependency Management. They are very tightly uh, bound to RMM and allow our, our uh, folks on the team to g interact with critical infrastructure organizations. So for EDM, we will go out and evaluate uh, organizations, you know, do you have some form of governance? Do you, do you go, how do you go about entering into contracts 
with, with organizations? Do you have service level agreements uh, established before you sign somebody up to work with them? Do you make sure that they can meet your needs? Uh, then we'll move over to after you sign that agreement, do you have uh, practices in place to manage that? So if, if an internet provider says to you, we'll give you 99.99% uptime, is there somebody in the organization that actually holds their feet to the fire and makes sure that they do that? And if they do, have you documented penalties if they fail to meet that service level agreement? So do you get a discount on your service? Do they give you a month free? And then we'll also wrap that up with the service protection and sustainment. So you've established the contract. You're making sure they're keeping to the letter of the contract. And you're also working with them for service continuity or incident response. So perhaps you have tabletops. Or when you have tabletops for your incident response, you engage your, your suppliers to make sure that they're, they're, excuse me, you're doing it most efficiently or perhaps it gives them an opportunity to say, hey, we can, we can maybe help you with this and save you some money, move it from capital expenditure to, to uh, ongoing. So it sounds like uh, we are not only making things more secure, mm -hmm. but we're also in increasing the predictability yes. of how organizations react when faced with some specific disruptive event. Yes. And I think there's an important point to make here, which is at CERT, at the, SCI, at the SCI, we do many things. Mm -hmm. So for our audience that's watching on, on LinkedIn, um, just because you're not a malware analyst right. or you're not an incident triage expert doesn't mean there isn't a role for you here at CERT. So I very specifically want to draw attention to the fact that we have openings right now yes. for folks that are interested in these concepts of capability maturity, yes. supply chain risk management, uh, and how these things fit together. So I would argue one of the best things about working here is that we can right. see sort of full life cycle, full, right. full spectrum, right. meaning from extremely fine-grained technical challenges right. through interacting uh, at the national policy level right. and talking to senior leaders. It's all part of the things we address here in our span of work. Right. So uh, just to go back to CMMC a little. So we had folks that would help analyze. So I mentioned there were a number of standards that we were using. So we had to have people map the practices between those various standards back to 800-171 to make sure that when we, we said that that is a mapping that it was correct. So you need some form of cybersecurity expertise. Also you need to be a cybersecurity evangelist, right? You need to be able to go into the into these organizations and be able to prov give them some sort of assurance that you know what you're talking about. You may not be an expert in their Discipline, or you know, perhaps you go do water distribution or electric dis electron electric distribution. I'm not an expert in that, but yet I can help them, you know, evaluate their infrastructure and their policies or governance, and and perhaps provide some examples of how I can apply it to their discipline. So it's bringing a, a, a parity in cybersecurity in disparate. Correct. sectors and, and, and industries, which I think is a really important part of the mission. Now, Matt, when I, when I search for information about CMMC, mm -hmm. I get lots of results yes. back. My understanding is there's only a few officially yes. sanctioned sources. So for the audience that's watching on LinkedIn, can you describe where they should go to find information about Sure. CMMC? So if you are interested in being a C3PIO, which is a certified third-party assessment organization, essentially the auditors, uh, you should go to uh, www.cmmcab for accreditationbody.org. So again, that's www.cmmcab.org. Uh, that will also be in the description of the video. And then also, for the model and any briefings, the authoritative source on that information would be on the DOD's Acquisition and Sustainment website, which I believe is www.acq.osd.mil slash CMMC. That was a lot of acronyms. Yes. Again, they will be in the description below. Uh, but please, uh, folks, as you begin to investigate CMMC, those are your only two current authorities. Uh, if you are in the DIB, I encourage you to also reach out to the NDISAC, our National Defense ISAC. They have been uh, involved in creating the CMMC. So join the ISAC or the Information Sharing and Analysis Center, use the CMMCAB accreditation body website or the uh, acquisition and sustainment site at, at uh, Office of Secretary of Defense.
So, so be a discerning consumer of information yes. about CMMC. Correct. And, and certainly the work on CMMC is far from over. Yes. There's, there's many additional phases and things to do, as I understand it. Correct. And, and our, our participation, that is the SCI's participation, will continue. Right. Uh, for those that are interested about in careers or uh, looking into their options of joining the FFRDC, I would encourage them to follow the link to the, the position that's posted for this discussion. But there are, of course, many positions available. Mm -hmm. Matt, if you had to describe the sort of person we're looking for right. uh, to work in this space, what, what does that profile look like? What is the educational background, maybe their professional experience? Uh, professional experience. So if you're a person in, in IT or even uh, on the business side with perhaps you know like a CISSP or an SSCP or some form of credential in cybersecurity perhaps you have a master's in cybersecurity uh, uh, this is not a role where you'll be hands on keyboard uh, hacking or so be hands on keyboard just yes, typing yes typing you know again going through mappings reviewing documentation building presentations as i mentioned you will be an evangelist so evangelists usually need slides or or ideas to talk to. So those are the types of things we'd be looking for in a person. So someone that's, that's analytical, understands models and frameworks, yes. understands policy, yes. uh, cares about the big picture. Yes. OK, that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, a question about where we head next. Mm -hmm. So I know that, that this, the CMMC is focused on mm -hmm. a baseline of capability. Yes. And there are practices at varying levels. Mm -hmm. And levels four and five describe advanced persistent threats. We know that the threat mm -hmm. environment will continue to evolve. Correct. So it seems to me that one of the logical extensions that we'll see mm -hmm. is accounting for these new emerging threat vectors as the Correct. CMMC changes over time. Correct. So in, in my mind, it's trying to do a few things at once in a really positive way. Correct. It's trying to set a benchmark or a baseline of capability, but also anticipating future need as mm -hmm. the threats evolve. So. Uh, any sort of closing thoughts about where you see the model or the effort going? Sure. So one thing we really strive to include in the model was to lean towards description as opposed to prescription. So okay. we, we didn't want to say, hey, do exactly this. Instead, maybe we'll use to set your example as the threats change, build into situational awareness. A person that will receive information from an ISAC or other sources and will be given responsibility to act upon those uh, messages they've received and begin to modify perhaps their controls in their environment to address. So that's built into the model. Also, we have the process institutionalization. So when you get to levels four and five, you're talking about how do you measure the efficacy of the controls that you currently have in place to meet the CMMC practices. As your threat landscape evolves, obviously those controls may become less effective. Not all of them, but some of them. Mm -hmm. That will give you the ability to now pivot and begin to address, stay within the bounds of the practice, but also address the needs based on the, the threats that you're facing today. And this is something I really like about this body of work, and I think an important message for, for the folks that may be watching in LinkedIn and thinking about a career in this space. Mm -hmm. The fundamentals will always apply. Yes. And there's a great strength in that. So 10 years from now, when we're talking about quantum and computing, mm -hmm. quantum encryption, mm -hmm. or whatever sort of build a spaceship, find a unicorn stuff we're talking about, mm -hmm. these fundamental concepts of right. capability, risk, mm -hmm. will always apply. Yes. And I think it then, if you are so inclined, allows you then to flex and pivot in your career yes. to address these new challenges that perhaps we can't even anticipate now. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, very well stated. I don't think I can improve on okay. it, so I'm not going to try. <laughs> well, Matt, we, we've reached the end of our time here. Okay. Thank you so much for uh, educating us on the CMMC. You're welcome. And certainly for those that are watching on LinkedIn, Matt's given us some pointers, and they'll be displayed down below for information about the CMMC and also about careers here at uh, the Software Engineering Institute and specifically the CERT division. Yep. So thanks for your time, Matt. Thank you. Thanks for having me.